This is a 2017 Chevy Traverse, and this is how you put some new rotors in it. The tools you, the tools you need are a 7 8 socket. Take them puppies off. You will need a T30 hex, a 13 metric. I always have one of these big vice, vice C clamps. A couple ratchets, and obviously a hammer. And also, when you're getting into these calipers, I always use a breaker bar. And the bolts that hold those calipers on are a 13 16. Okay, let's go see how long this takes. Shouldn't be too bad. I always put the tire underneath the car just in case it slips off that jack stand or something. You have a little secondary support there. Here's our caliper. Right here, as you can see, this one's really worn too. And you'll see in the other video, I did just change the pads. But uh, when I got this off, the I noticed I needed new front rotors. I got back rotors. Back rotors don't need replaced. So I'll take the back ones back, but or send the back ones back, if that makes any sense. Anyways, long story short, here's where your T30 is. You'll have to pop that off. And then, yeah, you'll take this caliper off. And you'll have to undo this piece of the caliper so you can then repress the hydraulic brake cylinder but anyways yeah let's just get into it i'm going to take this caliper off next and like i said here's your 13 16 back here and your 13s you'll have to take both these off take this one off first top and bottom then secondarily do this one you can hit it with a ratchet secondarily easier okay like i said guys these bolts right here are brutal tight let's see here so i gotta think about this lefty lucy that wasn't so bad This bottom one can be tricky. I have found it's easiest to come in from the top like this, and then you can push against this. There's a, you can push against a shock in here. Give yourself a little bit more leverage. Good Lord, that's tight. And two, you should probably wear gloves. This is a real knuckle buster. There we go, get on there. There we go, okay. And once you get that first initial thing broke, then I just put a little ratchet on there. Pop them out. Just like this. Come on. Sometimes these can be a pain to come off. And if you have a hard time getting these off, a lot of times you can take a pair of pliers or a screwdriver or something and set right in there, kind of like this. There we go. Now, like I said, these pads are new. These pads have maybe a quarter of a mile of driving on them. And you can see how these grooves have already started wearing grooves in these other pads and that's why that's the other reason why I decided to go ahead and just put new rotors on here if th this is my wife's car kids are in here quite a bit she'll drive in and out to town there is less braking capacity when you put new pads on an old rotor that's grooved up like this because when you think about it that brake pad is only touching the furthest extending out part of that rotor so with as much grooving as going has been going on with it for the first probably 5,000 miles you're only going to have maybe 40 percent of the braking capacity on that front side the back side is smooth i didn't worry about the back but the front definitely needed to be either ground down or replaced in the 5,000 some odd miles before these brake pad pads could really seat in there. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So that's why I'm putting new pads on here. Okay, let's finish taking off this rotor. This one here, I'm just gonna set it to the side for now. I'll show you why we need that 13 here in a second. So right here's where that T30 goes into. You might need a pick or something to get in there and get all that dirt out. 
I don't know if you can see in there. This one's pretty clean looking. I might still pick it out, but because these things can eat eat these ratchets up. Oh yeah, that popped right out. Easy peasy. Okay. In my bolt pile. This is where you'll need a hammer, a couple taps. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me tell you something else real quick. <laughs> I missed it. Do not beat on this. There's a little metal shield in here. Don't hit that. Is what you're wanting to do is hit the back side of the rotor here. My bad, I messed up. But you learned. Okay. Find yourself having a hard time, just get a bigger hammer. Usually that fixes all of my problems in life. Get a bigger hammer. There it went. Just be a lot of mud on the back of that thing. Not too much, a little bit. So as you can see the back side, it's got some really big grooves in it too. So this is again why work. Swapping them out. Now around here, so this dust, brake dust is pretty bad for you. It's got a lot of asbestos in it. So always be kind of cautious when you're doing this. I always try to blow the dust off if I can, but. Yeah, I just kind of rusted on there. Nothing too bad. I might, this, this side has a little bit more rust than the other side did. I'm just going to brush that off a little bit. Be sure to line your holes up with that one. You got an extra hole right here on this one. There. Give me a sucker. And it should just sort of pound right up on there. Also, too, when you go to put your wheels on, it, they'll suck that up there, too. take much okay now here is the second part I was telling you about that you need to be kind of attentive to it's not too bad move it back here a little bit so here with the new rotor there's gonna be a little bit of space difference there so you'll still have to push this brake pad back towards you'll have to squish these cylinders in a little bit and like I showed you guys earlier the thing I use for that is just an old the old brake pad, but to do that correctly, you really need to pop these off, which isn't hard. You just gotta, there's two of them. Get you a 13. For a second. Just get a 13 and zip them off. Now, this whole thing, the holds of brakes and stuff should pop right off there. Come right on out. Come out of there, sucker. There you go. Be careful you don't knock your pads out. There you go. Now is what I do is I take my C-clamp and an old brake pad and I just suck that back in. This way you don't have to bleed the brakes or anything. So now I'm going to crank this thing and watch, watch like right here. That will that should start compressing down in there. As I screw it in, and that's your that's just your uh, brake cylinder or your hydraulic brake cylinder pushing against the brake pad that makes everything work. Now, if you would have opened that up on the back side and bled it off, which is a really easy way to do it too, there's a potential chance of air getting in the lines. This way, there's no air at all getting in the line. I have to crank it super tight just until it goes back. So as you can see, it's back in there now. Now what that has done is that will allow these brake pads to open, open all the way up. Don't breathe brake dust. It's really bad for you. Some people like to put Loctite on there. 
I don't know. I quit doing that a long time ago. And also, I'm not a professional mechanic. I'm a farmer that fixes all my own stuff. Now, these brake pads are opened up for farther and they will slide right over the top of this new oops of this new rotor there you go easy peasy now we just got to put our bolts back in those old holes right, get up there. there you go and that's pretty much it now when i get this all screw down put back together and tight i'll start it and, and you'll need to pump the brakes a few times in there because that pedal will go straight to the floor because you got to remember right here there's no compression so don't take off <laughs> right away and then two always before you go like in traffic or anything always drive and put a few miles on on a car i don't know if somebody knows what you're supposed to set this to in the comments please let, let us know as far as a uh torque specification goes yeah leave it in the comments let me know I'm curious but my torque specification is as tight as I can get it okay Whew. now all I gotta do is slap your tire back on one of the tricks I had an old mechanic guy teach me a trick for putting tires on and it's like you never ever ever lift with your back Try to put a tire on with your back, you'll hurt yourself. That's how he always did it was, so you come in here and you grab, right? And you don't, you don't use your back or your muscles really to pick anything up. Is what you do, just get your knees in here and you use your calves actually to pick up. So let's see how my, my knee right there, we'll check out this knee. So I can stand that knee up and give me three or four inches of leverage. So is what I always do is I come in here and grab the wheel, however you can grab the wheel. But, uh, and then just use your, Use your calves and your knees to pick that tire up. And manipul manipulate it around however you need to. My jack must be coming down on me. Oh, nope. Okay, let's see. Shoot. Yikes. My jack is leaking on me a little bit. But yeah, I didn't use my back one, one little bit to put that tire on. It may look like I did, but I didn't. And that is how you put new rotors on a Chevy Traverse. Pretty darn easy. Took us maybe 10 minutes to do the whole thing at most. But uh, yeah, so tr do that sometime. Save yourself some bucks and good luck. I'll put a link to some decent rotors uh, below this and some pads for you guys.